Hey guys, welcome back to YouTube channel to go find Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. A big shout out to the person that suggested this. They suggested I react to the unbelievable fact in Hadith about Alibaba and Amazon. So, without wasting time, let's get into the video. The brothers Salam. said the hour will not be established and we explained what that means. That means the, the day of judgment won't come until this thing happens. And that means that becomes one of the signs before the day of judgment. One of the indicators that the day of judgment is coming and or is near. The hour will not be established until trials become apparent. So there will be a lot of trials and tests. Lying becomes prevalent and that's actually... So simple, right? It doesn't need much explanation. Lying becomes prevalent. We see lying everywhere. Lying on the internet, lying on WhatsApp, videos, hoaxes, lies, commercials, lies, all lies, lies everywhere. And the lies spread so quickly as well because of the internet. I mean, in seconds, they'll reach around the world. But this is the part we really want from the hadith. And markets become interconnected. Markets become interconnected. It's really amazing and beautiful how the Prophet ﷺ mentioned this a thousand four hundred years ago. Like nobody would have known that markets would be so connected, you know. Meaning, if you look at Alibaba and eBay and Amazon, you've got all the, you've got everything basically under the sun in one place. You see, that's one way the markets are connected under one banner. That's one example. Another example would be like if you, if, for example, if you buy an automobile, if you buy a car. So now you dealt with the automobile industry, right? But in order for you to drive that car, you have to go to another industry. That's insurance. And then you have to go through the bank for the financing. So you see all these markets coming together in the case of the automobile. Even in the case of, of building the automobile, it comes from all over, parts from all over. You've got the, you know, the radio and the sound system. You've got the engine. You've got tires. You've got all these industries coming together to, to create this one you know, commodity. Then, markets being interconnected, stock markets, for example, a powerful example of that. Stock markets, it is a powerful example of the markets interconnected. Um, or the dollar, you know, rising, or, you know, if the, the dollar increases or decreases, it affects currencies around the world, it affects markets around the world. So, um, all that shows you markets being connected together. And that's one of the signs before the hour. Not necessarily haram or bad or anything, but it's just amazing that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned something like this a thousand four hundred years ago, and it, it is, it is the reality and the norm of uh, you know, markets in our life today. Um, others mentioned also that it could be that uh, you know it could be that you could quickly find out. Uh, you know, what's happening in other markets that they're connected in that sense that you can very instantly or instantly find out, you know, what is rising, what is falling, what is doing well, what is not doing well. And then others said it could be the ability to travel. Markets being connected, meaning, you know, you could easily go from this market to that market or from, you know, even though the distance was is far, you can easily connect. You know, if you're doing business with uh, China, for example, you know, you can be on a plane and then within a day, you're in China and you're connected with that market. Whereas, you know, without planes, look how far that would the distance would be. Anyways, that was a, that's really amazing, and that's what's happening right now as we speak. Another one mentioned by uh, An Nisa'i rahimahullah. The Prophet ﷺ said, indeed, from the signs of the hour, is a person will want to buy something, but he will be told, not until I seek the permission of the businessmen from such and such tribe. And a person will seek a scribe in a large area, but will find none. Okay, basically, this one is talking about how few people will control the markets. And there is such an amazing visual here. You know, even if you, if you search, there is an image that has all the companies in America and their parent companies. And you'll see that almost every product, they just go back to five or six major companies that own everything. And you just spend hours going through that document, and you'd be amazed at how many th this company is owned by that company. 
all of in the end go to it's going to be you know you know one of the three general electric and and i don't i forget the rest the the major four or five and everything else is owned by a company owned by a company owned by a company then it goes back to those um, that's the same also for uh, for news channels, you know, or, or you know, TV stations, you'll see that in the end there are just four or five that own all of them. So that's something again that's the reality of uh, of our world now. And the Prophet mentioned that 1,400 years ago. Next one is Sahih Bukhari, narrated by Abu Hurairah radiAllahu anhu. And Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "There will come upon the people a time." When a person does not care about their wealth, whether it is from halal or haram, their wealth. So we're not talking about meat, all right? It's talking about wealth. A person will not care if their wealth is from halal or haram. Now, I'll give you an example. Look, this, this young man came to me in Canada, and he said that I have a lot of gas stations, but I am going to get rid of all of them. I said, why not? Yeah, and it's a... And he doesn't sell alcohol, by the way. Doesn't sell any alcohol. But he said, I'm going to get rid of all of them. I'm going to sell all of them. And he's a young man who's got a number of gas stations. It's good business, right? So I said, why are you going to do that? He said, because up to 70%. And, and maybe this is just, so don't quote me on that, but that was related to his specific area in this part of Canada. He said, up to 70% of is from tobacco, from selling tobacco products. 70% of his income comes from that. Those of you who know about gas stations, you don't really make much money from selling gas. You know, it's like you make 15 cents a gallon or something pathetic like that. But what they really, where they really make their money is from the convenience store inside, you know, from selling all these other things. Of course, if you sell alcohol, that's where the majority of the money comes from. Right after that will be the tobacco. And then people buying sodas and wine and, and coffee and all that. But but it's interesting how I knew someone else who was looking for a gas station and then I told him what this guy said about, you know, 70% of his income being from tobacco. And he just kept looking. This didn't phase him at all. Like a lot of times you'll find people, they couldn't care less where their income is coming from, if it's halal or haram. They couldn't care less. I remember this man. He was a simple man, really. This was many years ago. He was working at... And... Uh, owned by a Muslim, and so all the other workers were Muslims, and then the owner gets them all together for a meeting, and he says, I know all of you work here because we don't sell alcohol, and, but I, I'm sorry, I'm not making enough money, so I'm going to have to sell, start selling alcohol. So this guy, and he's just a simple man, but he tells him, I have a better idea. Forget alcohol. Let's sell drugs. Let's sell drugs. I'll help like a drug ring put together, you know, package it and sell it and all that stuff and cut it. I don't know. I'm going to pretend like I know drug terms. All right. Uh, <laughs> but in the end, he said, we can make a lot more money than, than alcohol. And the guy says, oh, no, no, we can't do that. You know, the police will get arrested. We'll get in trouble. He said, subhanAllah, you're afraid of the police and you're not afraid of Rabbul Alameen. So subhanAllah, that took, the, the man was taken by that and he selling alcohol. Anyways, but the idea that a lot of people don't care where their income comes from. They don't care if it's halal or haram. It's one of the signs before the day of judgment. Okay. So, um, an, an interesting one here in Al-Adab Al-Mufrad narrated by Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi said, the hour will not be established until the people build houses which they adorn like the way clothes are embedded how on clothing you'll find embroidery. People will adorn their homes in a similar way. In a very similar way, they're going to adorn their homes. Now, what's interesting is that there's nothing wrong with designing and adorning your home. So it's just towards the end. Okay, let me put it this way. You live at the time of the Prophet wasallam, and people have simple homes that, they, I mean, they didn't even have the concept of hanging a painting on a mud wall or anything like that. So the concept of designing home didn't even exist really for them you know so he's the Prophet all he's doing is he's mentioning a time in the future when people will be able to design their homes now we can put lights on our walls and we can change the walls themselves and put pillars and put arches and put paintings and and put uh, those digital <laughs> frames and I don't know what 
The point is that is just to say that this is how much the world will change that people will adorn and design their homes the same way you would, would design a garment now. And that's all it is. It's not saying it's haram. It's not saying it's makruh. All right. Okay. Then uh, uh, another interesting one here. And we're just, like I said, we're just trying to cover as many of the minor signs as possible. And it's just, they're so interesting, aren't they, right? And it's so interesting that the Prophet who was in a completely different world, knew and described our world so perfectly, which is, a, again, an indication that he was a genuine Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Narrated by Tabarani, Anas ibn Malik narrates, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the days and nights will not stop. What does that mean? Same meaning. When will the days and nights stop? When the day of judgment comes. The days and nights will not stop until the most prosperous person in this world is Luka ibn Luka. Luka ibn Luka. Hmm. All right. So, <laughs> I'm laughing because I, I visited a, a country and they had a soda. Uh, it comes in a bottle and it was called Luka. Luka. Anyways. It's, uh, w so what does it mean, Luka ibn Luka? It's a generic term that means most lowly, the son of the most lowly. It means someone uh, that, uh, someone that has a, a nobody, okay, someone very rich, uh, but it could be not necessarily through inheritance. So Luka, يعني, a person that is radi and nasab والحسب لا يعرف له أصل ولا يحمد له خلق لا إله إلا الله someone is someone of bad and low lineage okay and he is not his origin is not known nor is any good quality or mannerism known to him يعني he is not known for having any good quality or good manners or anything of that so it means these people they will be in charge of people's affairs and they will control things or, con and, and, um, or control the wealth of others. So it's not an, a good thing. So don't go naming your son Luka so he becomes prosperous. I mean, Luka here means someone who's unworthy, someone really, for lack of a better term, trashy, who just becomes wealthy and prosperous. Now, isn't that the case today? All right, I'm just speaking about America. Isn't that the case? And you'll see... Some trashy and you know family or a trashy person, and then they have their own reality TV show. And what is, what is on their show? The whole episode. She is fighting with the other one, and they're calling each other names and bleeps, bleeps, bleeps. And they're the whole episode is just garbage. You're just fighting over garbage and and hitting each other. And then you go into the store and you see a towel with their name on it. Look at you're <laughs> I wouldn't buy a trash can with your name on it or a garbage bag with your name on it. But now these people, and all we see from them is just bad manners and trashy behavior and fighting and cursing and cussing each other on television. And now suddenly they want me to buy a product and a frying pan with their name on it. So people who have no value, no intellectually bankrupt, but suddenly they're popular and they're selling us products and they're making so much money and they're getting deals and, and, and all that. Look at Ibn Luka, just people who are not worthy and they're the most prosperous. And that's the situation we find all around us. Now, um, yeah, okay. Did I, I've got uh, uh, another interesting one here. This is uh, mentioned in Sahih Muslim, Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu anh. He mentioned the Prophet ﷺ said, it will soon be that the people of Iraq cannot receive food nor money. You following? It will soon be that the people of Iraq cannot receive food nor money. We asked from whom would this be? And he replied, the non-Arabs. He then said, it will soon be that the people of Asham cannot receive food nor money. We asked him from whom would this be? And he replied, the Romans or a Rum, which at that time also meant the Europeans. Didn't mean just Romans in, in that sense. He then remained silent for a while, after which he said, Towards the end of my ummah, there will be a leader who will pour out wealth without counting. Towards the end of my ummah, there will be a leader who will pour out wealth without counting. All right. Now, that, and that's amazing, because it, it has happened and is happening. 
Prophet said the people of Iraq will not be able to receive food nor money. And we know, could this be referring to the embargo that, that happened to Iraq you know, some years ago? It could very well be. And it could, as the scholars always leave it open, it could be that event and it could be another one coming as well. Wallahu alam. But the point is that we did see this happen. We did see an embargo on Iraq. They were not able to receive food. They were not able to receive money. People were not able to deal with them uh, financially and so on in business. And one of the amazing things, I remember this, if you remember, um, Madeleine Albright, who uh, at the time of Clinton, and uh, they were interviewing her. They told her that it is, uh, it is reported or an estimated that 1.5 million babies died in Iraq because of the embargo. 1.5 million babies died in Iraq because they weren't able to bring medicine into the country. There was this embargo. And I'll never forget that interview with her. She just looked right at the person interviewing her and she said, that's just the price you have to pay. 1.5 million babies. Can you just... Uh, um, 1.5 million babies on the ground and tell me that's okay? Anyways. So, yes, the embargo... And it was from non-Muslims, and non-Arabs could have meant non-Muslims because at that point a lot of the Arabs were, a lot of the Muslims, or all the Muslims were Arabs. So at that point, at that time period, if you said non-Arab, it meant non-Muslim. But as we know, the majority of Muslims are not Arabs. So um, then it says it will soon be that the people of, <coughs> excuse me, Sham cannot receive food or money, and the Sham. And everybody immediately thinks of Syria. And it, could that be the only interpretation of the hadith? There could be another one. We, don't, we hope there isn't. But this is happening. No food, no, no money reaching the poor people in Syria or people in Asham. And we've seen that. And we'll ask, we'll ask Allah Azza to facilitate their affairs and give them... An so then, uh, and he said this was from the, the Romans being the Europeans. Then the Prophet ﷺ remained silent for a while, after which he said, Towards the end of my ummah there will be a leader who will pour out wealth without counting. Now, there is little disagreement that that is the Mahdi because we have another hadith describing him in exactly this way. And that's why if you remember we said from the guidelines, you put the narrations together, you get a more complete picture. Okay. Uh, this is a beautiful one. <laughs> Al-Hakim, rahimahullah, mentions in, in the Mustadrak, Abu Hurair radiallahu anhu narrated, Prophet said, by the one in whose hand is my soul. So the Prophet is swearing by Allah. The hour will not be established until evil and stinginess are prevalent. And until the honest ones are thought treacherous and the treacherous honest. Hmm. Okay. The hour will not be established until evil and stinginess are prevalent. We see that. And until the honest are thought to be treacherous and the treacherous th thought to be honest. I don't know, do I need to explain that one? We see that all the... Okay, if you need an explanation of that, for the most part, <laughs> look to the Muslim lands and look at the leaders. And that, that's your explanation. Are the honest ones, the ones in power, the ones that are thought to be treacherous, or the treacherous ones thought to be honest? Make a decision for yourself. Okay, this one is interesting here, narrated by Imam Ahmad, rahimahullah, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu anhu, narrated the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, before the hour strikes, and before the day of judgment comes, people will only give salam to their acquaintances, taslim al-khassah, taslim al-khassah, people will give salam to those that they know specifically, only specific people. Commerce will be plentiful to the extent that a woman will help her husband in his business, the ties of kinship people will give false testimony and truthful testimony will be hidden and literacy will become widespread. Okay, so let's, let's see. There are a number of things in this hadith. One, people will only give salam to those that they know. And this is so true right now. Right now, if you don't, a lot of times you find people giving salam to those that they know. Sometimes even in the masjid, they'll see, if they don't know someone, they just, then they see someone they know, salam alaikum, kif hal. Now, if you give salam to someone that you don't know, sometimes they'll, they'll be like, uh, do I know you? I remember one time, and this is like many years ago, or maybe not that many, but I was like 17, what have you, sitting in front of the house, and a Muslim walked by, this is overseas. So I said, assalamu alaikum, 
He said, Wa alaykum salam. He went to the store or something. He came back maybe 20 minutes later, walked by, said, Assalamu alaykum. So he came up to me. He's like, Ahlan wa sahlan. Um, do we know each other? I said, salam. You know? But to him, it was like, okay, you gave me salam 20 minutes ago. Why are you giving me salam again? But, and I don't, and you must know me, the, the fact that you're giving me salam. But we said, from the signs of the hour. And it, it, this began, what's interesting is this began at the time of the companions. One time with the tabi'een, a man came and gave salam to just the companion. And the Prophet ﷺ told them that the Prophet ﷺ said, from the signs of the hour, taslim al khas that people only give salam to those that they know. And of course, you can imagine, becoming more pronounced towards as time progressed. That was the first one. People only give salam to those that they know. The second one says, commerce will be plentiful to the extent that a woman will help, help her husband in business, in his business. And um, I remember there used to be people who used to misunderstand this hadith. They thought that if your wife helps you in your business, that means this is such a bad sign that you love the dunya so much that your wife is now working with you. Okay. There's nothing wrong with your wife working with you and helping you with your business. Because I think we can agree that a woman can go work somewhere, right? She can go work at a company and get a paycheck. It's halal. I hope everyone agrees with that. Now, if she can work at some other man's company, which is better, that or she works at her own husband's company? Which one? So why would it be haram or bad? It's halal for her to work for some other guy, but for her own husband it's a bad thing? Because, you know, of course, we all know the advantage. If she works at her husband's company, then really she's the president of the company. True or false, right? Interesting video. I mean, it pretty much spoke about some of the signs we should look out for or be aware of and some of them are actually happening as we watch this as we speak as we do whatever we do each and every day uh, but then yes i understand i was um i was thinking of the example given of the car different companies come together to provide different services or objects and those are put together to make a car but can the person that suggested this or anyone watching this explain to me how that uh, relates with the two mentioned companies are we talking about are we talking about them in terms of how um they offer their services that has been predicted or what exactly let me know what you guys think if there's something that you guys want me to react to drop the link in the comment section below and i'll be more than glad to do it otherwise make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video